In the last episode, I asked you to think about how you might implement mutable state using a process. Today we'll look at doing it ourselves, as well as checking out Agent from the standard library that exists for this very reason. Let's get started. We'll start a new project. We'd like to build a process that represents a counter. We can increment it or decrement it by sending it messages. This means it has to maintain an internal state that we can change. Elixir is an immutable language, so how do we manage this? Let's start out with some tests. First, we'll test that we can start the counter. We'll return a two-tuple containing an OK and the process ID when we call counter.start and pass an initial value. And then we'll just assert that the process ID we got back is in fact a PID. We'll open up lib counter.ex. Start takes an initial value, and it's going to return the two-tuple OK, and then we'll spawn the counter, the loop function that we'll create in a moment. We'll pass a single argument initial value. And then we'll define loop. It takes the value. And for now, we'll just return OK. And that should be enough to make the test pass. So let's come back to the test and run it. And it passes. So let's build out a means to get the value from this process, following the same pattern that we used in the last episode. So we'll make a new test. We'll test getting the value. We'll start it. And then we'll assert that we can get back a two tuple containing OK and the value, which should be 0, from calling counter.getValue and passing the process ID. Obviously, this test will fail because we don't have a getValue function. We'll come back and make it. it takes a process ID. But before we get there, we want to handle this loop. So we'll do a receive loop. Now in our loop, we expect to be told who a message is from, a ref that is unique to the request, and a term that tells us what to do. In this case, it's going to be get the value of the counter. We'll send that value back with the ref so they know it's the appropriate response, and then we'll tail call with the existing value. So we'll say when we get a message that's from and some reference and get value, then we will send to the calling process a three tuple, okay, the ref, and the value. And then we'll just call loop looping back into ourselves with the same value. Now get value is what the caller is going to use. So first off, we'll make a ref, and this is just a unique value. And then we'll send to the process ID a three tuple containing our process ID, and this is the caller, the reference, and the get value atom. And then we'll come into our own receive loop, and we'll wait for an OK, the ref that we created, and some value. We'll pattern match out the value. And then finally, we'll return OK val from this function at the point that we receive this. And this hat is called pinning. So we've pinned the ref, so we say we only match when this middle element is in fact the reference that we made. Okay, so with this, let's go run the test, and it passes. From here we can add two new messages to our receive loop, increment and decrement. So let's start by writing a test for increment. So we'll start a counter, we'll call counter.increment on the PID, and we'll just get back OK from that. And then we'll assert that the new value is 1 when we call counter get value. Okay, this will fail because there is no counter increment function. So we'll come back to the counter and we'll define increment. And here we're just going to send that PID a call to increment, or the increment atom rather, spelling send correctly. And then we'll return OK immediately. And then we need to handle in our receive up here, we'll handle a call or the increment atom. And when that happens, we'll just loop back on ourselves with value plus one. And this is the key to managing state inside of a process. We're just doing a tail call and we're calling back in with our updated state. OK, we can run the test, and it passes. From here, it's easy to see how to implement decrement. So we'll just do this, and we'll start off with something like 2. We'll test decrementing the value, and we should still get 1 back, decrementing from 2. And we'll come back over here, and we'll implement decrement. Obviously, this is subtraction. And we'll make a function to make it easy to send the message without knowing the internals. OK, and if we come back and run the whole suite, it all passes. So this is how you can implement mutable state with processes, but of course this is something that people frequently do. So we'll discuss GenServer next week, it's part of ODP, but for now we're just going to look at something else the standard library provides us, it's agent. According to the documentation, agents are a simple abstraction around state. That is, they provide an easy way to wrap some state up in a process and interact with it. Let's look at how we could use an agent in place of our hand-rolled process to build this counter. So we'll leave the tests as they are, we'll come to the counter, and I'm just going to strip out all of the internals of the functions we care about. So we want start, get value, increment, and decrement, and then we'll implement them with agents. So we'll start out by starting an agent, and when you start an agent you just provide a function that will return the value for it to begin with. When we want to get value from an agent, we just call agent.get, pass it the PID, and then we pass it a function that gets the current value right here, and so then we just return OKX. To increment we send a function that tells the agent what to do with its state, so we'll call agent dot update, passing the PID and passing a function again that gets the current value and returns the new value, and decrements the same but with a subtraction. Okay, so now if we run the tests, they all pass, but obviously this is a little lot less code. 
So it works just as well as our hand-rolled process. I wanted to go through managing the mutable state directly with processes by hand so that you could see that there's no magic here. This is just a nicer API on top of essentially what we were doing before. It's not exactly the same because Agent is built on top of OTP, and we'll get into that a bit more next week. In today's episode, we saw how to manage mutable state with processes. First by rolling our own process, and then by using the Agent module from the standard library, which exists for this very reason. Introducing an actor that owns some mutable state. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.